most important thing you're you're welcome the most important thing though that came out of survivor series 1997 isn't the screw job it isn't stone cold getting on the trajectory it's not michael's winning the title it's vince mcmahon and it's vincent kennedy mcmahon not the announcer not the good old boy it is vince mcmahon the owner brett screwed Brett. Of course. That was a great selling tool. Sounds good. Look, hear me out. Okay. NWO is kicking Vince's ass. Eric calls his podcast 83 weeks because Nitro beat Raw on the ratings 83 consecutive weeks and will not beat Nitro until April of 98. Vince McMahon inserts himself in the storyline, becomes the most evil person on the planet in the world, the personification of evil. He is everybody you're against. Okay. He inserts himself against Stone Cold Steve Austin. Again, Art McMahon was a character, and that's why the docuseries of Netflix is exactly what you just said, an evil person. Yes. That was his character. Yes. Arguably the you hottest wrestler in the world against the now Vince McMahon, tyrant, owner of the company. I did it. Brett screwed Brett. No remorse. The most important thing that came out of this is Vince McMahon really just poured gasoline onto the Attitude Era. Mm -hmm. My opinion. Mm -hmm. yeah. What is the legacy of the Montreal screw job, in your opinion, Medusa? Because they come to listen to you, not me. Well, I don't know if it's the legacy, but I will tell you it. You are all welcome. You're all welcome. If it wasn't for the mastermind of Eric Bischoff and Medusa, nobody would have made money thereafter because it changed just changed the trajectory of wrestling to the Attitude Era. You're welcome. Yeah, I like to call it a series of fortunate events, and this being the crescendo. The catalyst, yes. So it speak. was, I believe, it was the beginning I'm not saying well, I did it. I didn't create everything. I'm just fucking blowing smoke up my own ass. But I'm well, just saying, if it wasn't for that big wake-up call, I think that's when shit hit the fan. Yeah. Well, here's what I'll say. Bischoff takes over, wants to be edgy, live TV, starts giving Raw results away because Raw's recorded. You throw the title in the trash can. Well, Luger comes in. You throw the title in the trash can. We got this guy who just said Austin 316 says, I just whooped your ass. We got Kevin Nash flipping people off at Survivor Series 95. Then we got Steve. Excuse me. I got that out of order. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to build the Stone Cold character. And we're going into 97. And Brett, Bret Hart, one of the things we didn't talk about is when he loses the match to Psycho Sid in a cage match, he calls it bullshit and he throws a tantrum and he grabs Vince by the collar and he's throwing TV monitors and all this other stuff. You're getting edgier is my point. It's just a series of incremental things. And this that's when Brett realized that it, he noticed that things were changing and it wasn't for him. And that's probably why he wanted out at that, at that point. Well, and my whole point is Vince McMahon is the architect behind a lot of this and finally just assumes and steps into the role of Mr. McMahon. There you go. Mr. McMahon, the evil one of the docuseries. Quite frankly, Medusa, I don't think there's any separation between the two, but I never worked for the man. So, um, and I'm not just saying that wholesale. I'm you don't think there's out. any separation? You think he's 100% evil all the time? Uh, well, when you get Trish Stratus barking like a dog, you do the angles with Linda, you suggest that you're you're the father of Stephanie's baby. That's absolutely disgusting. Um, <laughs> and all of the other <laughs> stupid shit that he did along the way, 
know, you said you said Trish Stratus barking like a dog. Barking like oh a dog. God. That was to me just completely no. out of pocket. Out For of him hand. to have that control over her to do that in some type of angle, you know, he's got shit on people, and not just literally shit on people, but you know, he's. He's got some type of strong arm on somebody for some reason. You know what I mean? I would have, if he would have said, you're going to go on your knees, you're going to bark like a dog towards me, and you're going to do that. I, fuck you. I don't care if this is wrestling, because back then it wasn't even a fucking, no. It was degrading for a reason. I don't know what it was, but what the fuck? You don't do that. That's not wrestling. See, that's where I'm different. Kiss my ass. <laughs> well, this is what I will say. I will say it um, kind of like you remember the, the Academy. That's why I left. I said, fuck you. The women are going this direction. You're making me prance out in these fucking shit and bullshit nightgown, fucking barbecue bullshit. I'm like, I'm cha wrestling's changed. I'm out. I was under contract. I was collecting a fucking paycheck because at that point that's all it meant and I was out. I'm out. Have fun degrading women. Well, this is what I was going to say. This is my final thought and then I'm going to let you close this out. Academy Award winning movie, A Few Good Men. Tom Cruise is speculating about Jack Nicholson's character Nathan R. Jessup who's running the Cuba, the base in Cuba. Oh God, so now you're going to say someone took this out and put it in wrestling. Yeah, go ahead. No, no, no. What I'm saying is, is that Tom Cruise's character is speculating that Jack Nicholson is being eaten up by the fact that he can't just say, I ordered the code red. I did it. I made the decision. It was me. Vince McMahon is Nathan R. Jessup. <laughs> he made the decision. He did it. He just can't get away with saying it. And we'll find <laughs> out what Netflix has to say. Oh, I can't wait. We're going to come I, back. I, this is good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But that's my point is he is who he is. The Terry Garvin ring boy scandal along with Oof. Pat Patterson. That's some nasty, heinous shit. The NDAs we don't know about. The mm. What happened behind closed doors. And you're right. It's not just Vince, because I'll say this in a loud, clear voice. No, it wasn't. I have no problem thinking the inner circle knew Vince was was a shithead at the very least. Okay, let's even if he didn't do anything illegal, he's a shithead. And they knew. And they knew. The problem is the inner so circle. So if 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 Bruce knew if his Bruce son knew and his if, son in law. If Bruce knew the things that you said and reported earlier about the tw Brett knew because he was that close. Mm -hmm. You just told on Bruce because Bruce knows everything. 100% Bruce knew that Vince McMahon is a bad actor and a shitty individual. He may not have known all of the gory details, but Bruce is the consummate politician. And I love Bruce Pritchard's creative mind and storytelling and ability. But he's the best spin doctor WWE ever had. Spin doctor. That's good. That yeah. should have been his name, not Dr. Love. Yeah, brother <laughs> love. Good. Yeah. Our yeah. brother love. Yeah. But that that to me is Bruce. And and he's yeah. gonna protect Vince because Vince was like a father figure. Well, they have brother. a lot on each other. Let's just put it this way. I 100 percent There's no doubt. But what but I will say is, this in the same breath. Bruce was good to me. He and was, you've said he was that. good and to me, man. I will put him over like a motherfucker. Bruce was good to me. I, isn't this funny? This, this ought to tell you all something. And, and you know what? I, it just, I just thought of this. It just validates everything I say that when I say Vince was good to me, Bruce was good to me. Why? If you want my answer, it's because they knew they couldn't be bad to you. <laughs> I mean, I, I wouldn't put up with shit anyway, but 